Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Gulfstream today. Ron Nicoletti, along with Ashley Mayu. And the good news today, Ashley, is we're back on the turf, and it is a good turf. So we'll see how things play out throughout the afternoon. And the main track is fast. I'd say that's great news after yesterday. Obviously, a lot of scratches on the card, and we had three stakes. But I have to say, the stakes have turned out to be exciting races, especially the two for the two-year-olds, the Armed Forces and the R. Deer Peggy. So excited to see what we have in store today. Just excited to be on the grass. Yeah, you know, it's good to be back on the grass. And you're absolutely right. Those two-year-old races were. Uh, you know, they say formful, you know, because those two-year-olds hadn't had many starts in their life. And we saw a couple of really nice ones. We'll actually show a couple of those uh, races a little later on during the lightning round. Well, as we mentioned, we're going to start the day with a fast main track firm turf course. We've got a $200,000 jackpot guaranteed pool in the Rainbow Six. Race number five, 10 race card, couple of pick fives. Ashley's got the early one. Yeah, looking at the early pick five sequence in this card, I actually go three deep in here. I use the number one, Wild Texas Tom, the five, Mr. Einstein, and the six, Billy Yank. Race two is a one-mile turf event. I just went too deep in here, uh, kind of looking at the scratch of the number seven, Maker of an Empire. I thought it was a huge scratch. So I go to the number four, Triple Jeopardy, and the six, Mr. Leonardo, for my two there. Race three, two, uh, two deep in here as uh, well. Uh, use the number two, Another Duke, the three, Ocean Ride, and the six, Create Again. Race four, just too deep in here. It's a starter allowance going five furlongs on the turf. I have interest in just the two runners on the inside. Harry's on the loose, who comes in here with an overnight handicap win, as well as the number two, Tropicat, off the layoff. And then to wrap things up, uh, this is a race where I use a favorite and I use a price. I think there's one of two things that's going to happen. I think science is going to win for fun or is going to be <laughs> defeated in this spot by an, a long shot. So I go with the number two, science. May also use my long shot on the day, the number 10 at Marimba, 6 to 1 on the morning line. 6 to 1 on the morning line. We're pretty much in agreement. I didn't use that 10 in the last leg, but uh, I got a lot of time to use it when I put my Rainbow Six ticket together. Uh, I started off the, the first race. I'm glad you used this horse. A little cool on the board. We're down to 6 to 1 very early in the wagering, and that is the number 5. We got it right on top. Mr. Einstein, and I, you just, you know, this rally three wide to finish second at this level and distance. I thought of that performance so wide open here. Pete Wazluk Jr., JC. Diaz Jr., a name to run. I'm just going off that last race. Yeah, the last three actually have been at the level and the distance, and I know that the start two back is lackluster in there, and that actually was the lowest price that he's been in those three starts, but he said two second places out, uh, finishes out the level, and I mentioned these are his only three starts here at Gulfstream Park, so I think off his most recent, he looks pretty tough in here. I know hard 10 was pretty well respected in that effort in late July. You know, the number six horse you have in second, Billy Yank. I, I couldn't make this horse. I tried, but I went back, and it turned out it was the morning line favorite. I just, you know, it hasn't run that well to, to you know, deserve that moniker, I guess is the best way to say it. Yeah, the best race that he's had, I mean, in my opinion, you have to go all the way back to his only on the board finish back in March uh, March 10th of 2021 when he finished second. He was in for the $35,000 tag. They picked him out of there. They jumped him up in class. It didn't work. And then last time out, he raced at this level, ex the same race as Wild Tech is Tom and he finished seventh in a 12 horse field I mean I really think he's hard to endorse on the top spot but he is getting his second try at the level maybe that will help him today I just uh, I used him underneath well I just put him in the winner's circle so the, uh, <laughs> the connections congratulate me I don't like him that means he wins the number one wild Texas Tom comes off a pair of late closing third place finishes against this same level of competition I, I think merits consideration in this wide open affair just one of these horses here you know it, it's almost impossible to figure out what the pace scenario is going to be in here. Who's going to really go to lead? There's no pinpoint speed that you can see in this spot. Yeah, I think that makes it difficult just from a handicapping perspective. You mentioned Wild Texas Tom. He's coming in here off a pair of third place finishes. Those have been the best two races of his career, but really last time out, he was dead last early on and circled up to finish third, only missed by two and a quarter. He had to go wide in there. I think it was a pretty strong effort, and uh, Luca Panici has been aboard for the last few. High Jump Charlie is uh, hoping uh, for a clean trip. This horse had a, if you go back and look, he steadied at the quarter pole, then he steadied again at the 360 pole when checking in sixth and last uh, last time out. But, he, but his performance two starts back. If he can repeat that, I don't know about winning it, but can be on the board. And the horse that we both have in fourth is the current two to one favorite, and that is number four, Sandy Dude. Well, the one thing with Sandy Dude is last time out, he's exiting that same race that High Jump Charlie is, Wild Texas Tom. He finished fifth in there. Uh, he's kind of shuffled around a bit. That was going Going a mile. It wasn't a great performance. The last time he went to a mile prior to that at the level, though, he was second beaten by a length. Uh, I just think kind of looking at that last race and these horses, they faced each other. Some have finished in front of the others. It depends on which race. It's just it's hard to handicap. 
Well, let's go to race two then. The mile on the turf, claimers, three-year-olds or four-year-olds and up, non-winners of two in life, 35 down to 25. And we had a, a lot of interest in the horse that was scratching mm -hmm. here, number seven, a maker of an empire, but not going to run today. And uh, I want to note that the jockey on the number four will be uh, Semi Camacho, Edgar Zeiss, off all his mounts today. So uh, he's, he, I think he was in six or seven, five or six races. So we'll let you know. And of course, Pete Aiello will update you with all that stuff uh, when we're done here. So uh, Triple Jeopardy, and I, I think you use the logical two on your ticket here, and, and you really pick five ticket. Triple Jeopardy, wheel and back, stalk to pace, finish fifth. But that was against 16 state bred optional claimers going a mile. That was that softened turf listed as good. That's what we're going to be dealing with today. Carlos David, I think, spots this gelded son of Kozan where he's po poised to notch his first turf victory. Yeah, and looking at the turf, you mentioned it's going to be his, try to go for his first t uh, turf victory in career number seven on the turf, at least in terms of starts. But he's four for six in the money. Two starts back at the level he performed well. I know it was over the main track, but that was back at the $35,000 level. So the connections last time out, second off the claim, put him on the grass. Not the ideal outcome, I think, at the $35,000 level. He's certainly one to watch. And we just talked about Carlos David. Mm -hmm. He spots his horses beautifully every single time. So I think he really wants this one on the turf at the level. Oh, a horse that's coming back here is uh, six, Mr. Leonardo's making his local return, the first start. He rallied to finish third behind that repeat winner called U.S. Constitution. That was a $30,000 claimer going a mile in the 16th on the Mama Turf. Joe Arsino, Luca Panici handling the homecoming today. I have really watched many races from Mammoth Park. I, I, you know, I, I went back and looked, and this horse ran okay. Yeah, and he's only had those two starts since leaving South Florida. One was over the mud. It was originally a five and a half, uh, probably five furlongs on the turf there. Ended up being five and a half on the main track, and he, he didn't perform too well there. It was on the dirt, so that's fine with me. Last time out, there was improvement, but look at him before he left Florida. I mean, he had two second place finishes at the level, or excuse me, a second and a third. He fits there. Uh, one of the third place finishes, I know he surrendered the lead late, but we haven't talked about this horse in a while. <laughs> we usually talk about Uncle Fun a lot, who was kind of killing <laughs> it on the turf for a bit, so I think he really fits here well. And the number one, Alada, was uh, stretching out a while. Pair of really sharp five for a long turf re sprints recently, including that much the best $40,000 maiden score last time out, Antonio Sano, Lionel Reyes. If this horse could handle the stretch out with that inside post, you know this one is going to be, I, I think, on or with the pace today. He's only had that one try uh, at the mile distance. You have to go back to March of 2021 to find it. He finished mid-pack in there. It wasn't a great performance. It wasn't horrible. He comes in here off his maiden win. My only reservation is not, I shouldn't say that, there's two reservations. It is the stretch out he'll have to handle all that, but he is facing winners for the first time. Yeah, so we'll see how that horse runs, and I think you can get a little bit of a price on that horse, but I think as Ashley did it on the ticket, the four and six might be the logical two in that race. Race three is a mile on the fast main track, allowance optional claimer, three-year-olds and up. Optional tag is $25,000. Jockey on the six is Sammy Camacho. Uh, I went with the three in here, Ocean Ride, and, and I was sort of surprised to see this one. Maybe I'm handicapping this race wrong, six to one on the morning line. I thought this one might be the favorite. I would, If I was the mind, line maker, I'd be in big trouble. This one is making his first start. He went up, he set the early pace. He finished third, was against good $75,000 optional claimers going a mile. Now, it was back in May, Gustavo Delgado. Has this son of Candy Ride training forwardly for the drop to the 25 level? I, I just thought all those put together, and Gustavo does a good job with this kind of layoff, would be the one to beat in here. Well, and if you like trainer jock angles, I feel like Christian <laughs> Torres and Gustavo in the last maybe four or five race days, they've teamed up a couple of times. One with Thalio, I believe, uh, two days ago with Sam Moranti. They've been doing well, and you can see that from the 22% angle when they team up at Gulfstream Park. Uh, this one went at first asking, and then I know that the two performances after that lackluster, one was in the Limehouse little horse by the tr name drain the clock <laughs> ended up winning that we know he's a graded stakes winner since then and then he had some time off so i did think he needed that race in april and then lost him out second off the layoff it was a good performance again he's been sidelined for a bit but uh, he certainly offers value in, in the spot i used him for third but uh, i think if you remember early pick five i still had to use him in my ticket well, on top, you have the number two, another Duke. I didn't know there was another Duke. We have the main Duke here, who's our paddock judge. And one Duke is enough, but this horse is another Duke. <laughs> you said it. I didn't say it. You said it on record, Ron. I thought last time out, second off the layoff, it was a really good performance. I'm always really uh, fond of the work that Michael Yates does. And it was just a big improvement. He only missed by two and a quarter. Prior to that, he was a well-defeated fourth. So looking at his most recent effort, uh, the top two, Ludington's a pretty nice runner. My main man raced yesterday in the stake. Uh, had a troubled break in there, 
finished for. So I think he's been facing some nice local horses. Yeah, and you know, and he's a three-year-old son of Bodie Meister, Jesus Rios in the saddle. And you're right, Mike Gates, uh, we can't go wrong picking him. His horses, you know, running. At first you thought, oh, he just is two-year-olds, you know, Cajun Breezes run okay. But he's been okay with all sorts of horses yeah. at all sorts of levels, surfaces, and distances. The number six horse who we have in second, I have a third, you have in second, Create Again, is in for the $25,000 tag in this optional claimer. Stretches out to the mile, set the pace, weakened to finish fifth against 32 claimers going seven for Peter Walder. This is where we got the jockey changed to Sammy Camacho. Yeah, it's interesting. I wish I would have gone back and looked at the race on July 29th to see if he was an MTO when there was a four-horse field. It was on the uh, on the the originally for the turf, moved to the main track at the slop. He was favored there, 40000 Next time out, just a couple weeks later, he was in for 32 and it was a better price. He was almost 9-1 to one in that spot, part of the early pace scenario, and tired in there. So I didn't know what to do with his efforts. I still think looking at him and knowing that it's Peter Walder, he's at must-use in here. I didn't want to get beat by him. Originally, Edgar Zayas set to ride, so I thought there was a lot to do with the angles there. Uh, it just depends what version of him shows up. Well, we we got the same uh, super sort of box <laughs> in here, so uh, I think those are the logical three. We're going to flip the page and go to the fourth race. Five furlongs on the turf starter allowance. Uh, three or and up started for $25,000 or less. And uh, uh, we got to, of course, go back and watch Harry on the loose's last race. Before we do that, scratch the three and the jockey on the seven Henry's world. And here you're going to see it right now. Harry's on the loose. Drops into the starter allowance. I, I thought it ran r really well in this race. You know, there's some nice horses in this race. And there you see Harry's on the loose, you know, making his real nice movies. The number seven. But look who's reeling and trying to reel him in. A horse that we really like here. And that's nine to five, Tiger Blood. I thought this was a really good performance. And Liz Doble's claimed this horse a couple of starts back. has been going really well since the claim. Yeah, and that was a tough race on paper. I mean, a lot of attention was on Jack and Noah, the French bred uh, gelding, who's trained by Mark Cassie. Didn't fire it off the long layoff, maybe needed the race. You mentioned Tiger Blood, a tough horse. Romario, who he has to face again today. These are hard-knocking horses that face e each other almost about every single start, <laughs> I feel like. So it was a really good win from him. Uh, he was a price that day. And prior to that, I thought his fifth-place finish in the turf sprint wasn't uh, that bad. I mean, I know it's fifth. You missed the, the big check mm. in there, finishing the top three. But he only missed fine length in three quarters. So I like that he got the confidence boost, lost him out. He's a two-time winner this year. I do think he probably is the one to beat on paper. Well, you used, I, 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 you know, the number two traffic cap, I see second on the morning line. I know you have some interest in his horse. Tell me what I missed. Well, we'll just start with, first off, a trainer stat for Ralph Nix. One of my concerns with using Tropic Cat on top would be that he's coming off a bit of a layoff. But just looking at Ralph Nix and the work that he does, first off, the layoff of about 61 to 180 days the past two years, 17% in terms of wins. In the money, though, this is kind of the value you're getting, 51% with a $2.21 ROI. And when you look at Tropic Cat, his record this year, he's had those four starts. We haven't seen him since May, but he's yet to miss the board. Last time out, thought it was a pretty nice second to French Reef, who we talk about quite a lot here came back to win next time out uh, he's he's faced fully loaded belgrano he's faced nice horses here i think he's going to get a good trip just off the pace the question is when you start to look at him maybe the last couple years uh, he's a seven-time winner in his career but he tends to just miss by a narrow margin. Well, the number seven, Henry's World, would try to make it two in a row after responding in that first race. After the claim by Gilberto Zerpa with that front-running score against those 25 optional claimers at this distance, this jockey change, MCL Jaramillo, who's going to fit the race shape perfectly with this horse, I think he's a big player in here. Well, he's quick. They'll give him that much. I mean, if you look at his last couple of races that he's won, he's gone 21-1 and one or 21-2, and 43-4, and 43-3 four, and three to the half. I mean, he's been quite speedy in those races and has been able to draw clear in there and no one's really been catching him the only thing today i think he is in deeper waters even when he was in a starter allowance competition i know he's in a different barn but just a couple months ago he wasn't really getting the job done he was quitting so we'll see you know the new connections seem to have him trending in the right direction a little bit of a short turnaround with captain ronnie's wheeling back in eight days looking to prove in that comeback performance uh, and, and you know in which he uh, tracked the really swift fractions in that race and finished third rohan Crichton has edwin gonzalez is the top really consistent eight-year-old son of spitestown yeah six for six in the money this year last year he only missed the board once and look at his record here at golf stream park over the turf five Five, five, five from 17. So he's only missed the board those two times. I mean, his record speaks volumes. He's an eight-year-old. You have to appreciate horses like this. Uh, I used him in, uh, for third in here. That's kind of just what I've seen from him against some others in here. But he's got a big shot. I like his name, too. But really? I just <laughs> wanted to have guessed that. <laughs> we'll take a short break. I have my Rainbow Six ticket.
12 as they roll into the backstretch. Welcome back to Gulfstream today, Ron and Ashley. Fast track, we're on the turf. Turf course is listed as good. Always great when we're on the turf. Let's take a look at my Rainbow Six ticket this afternoon, the old 4320, three deep here in race number five. And I agree, I couldn't have said it better. Either science is gonna win or be up the track. This horse, uh, you know, I put him on top, but I use bright and shiny and undercover outlaw on my ticket. Race number six, just too deep. I like Express Farrow and Sassy, but smart. In race number uh, seven today, Ziggy's my best bet the afternoon. Uh, I like the turf to dirt angle with Juan Alvarado, but I also did use the number three, uh, three horse in their creative choice. R race number eight, I think it's a great betting race, but I did just go with Loudon and Bombs and Freedom Matters, who really woke up two starts back, didn't run that well, maybe bounces back today. And then in race number nine, three deep in there with the three, the four, and the number seven in that race. I believe I got my long shot in there, if I can get the page over to tell you who it is, Extravagant Rosie who's 15 to 1. I think I'm just, this horse got to prove it could run on, on, on the dirt. He's been on the turf, just taking a shot. And in the last three, eight, and nine, the three being golden decision, 43-20. We're pretty much on the same page. Same. I think in race eight and race nine, we may be different. Mm -hmm. Obviously here, we have the same opinion. Uh, I think the horses that we're going to try <laughs> to beat science with, they differ. Right. Well, number two, science, getting to this horse. And we put this one in the winner's circle, too. So you got two races that absolutely the first and now the fifth. At the, this one, science going back to the main track today uh, after following a pair of second-place finishes. That was sprinting on the grass. Uh, you know, comes back and uh, uh, on the dirt at this level, stalks, fades to finish six. Juan Alvarado, as I mentioned, he's pretty good with the uh, grass to dirt movies, about 24%. Talk about a mare with second nightis, 10 starts <laughs> in total, six second place finishes. So basically she's second or she's not there. A uh, last time out, I'll, I'll draw a line through the effort. It's <clears> turf. <throat> There's no point in really touching upon that. Yeah. But two starts back, she finished second. She was well defeated. Three starts back, second well defeated. I mean, most of the times that she's been second, the winner's just been much the best and she's been second best. So I don't know what to make of that. I mean, she could win for fun in here against some others in here because I think others are going to have to improve. But I would have to think science is going to be quite the short price in here yeah. and it's not a lock. Yeah, and what about Marimba? I was just looking back. I didn't use this horse uh, getting first-time Lasix this afternoon. Yeah, getting first-time Lasix, second start off the layoff for the Dennis Manning Barn, who's just two for four, second off a 45 to 180-day layoff, small sample size. I, I know she really hasn't shown that much on paper, this daughter of two-step salsa, but she's been consistently against tougher. Last time was $16,000 maidens, the lowest level of her career, but it was on the turf. And I, I have to think, too, when I look at some horses that she's faced here, especially in that race two back, Kamar's Tal, Mackenzie's Girl, really nice horses here locally. So this is going to be like the easiest competition that she certainly faced. Christian Torres has been riding well. I think had two winners yesterday on the card. Just going with a lot of changes for this one. And you mentioned, I think Lasix is huge. Yeah, Lasix is huge for that horse. A couple other horses we did use uh, is the number of 12 is one of those. And that is bright and shiny. He was uh, stretching out to three quarters of a mile today. And breaking from the outside after rallying to finish that distant second, it was against the same level going five and a half first. Furlongs. Luca Panici rides for Walt Woodard. Uh, I thought maybe three quarters of a mile. Got to deal with the outside post. Has, I think, one scratch to its inside, so it would be post 11 this afternoon. Yeah, the two races here have been kind of better than the races we saw at Tampa from her, and I think she's another case. She's faced runaway winners. Piper, who's in the Carlos David Barn, was claimed one by 12 and a quarter, two starts back, and then more recently, the winner was just nine and a half clear. This one was second best, so it'll be interesting. You mentioned the outside draw. I'm not thrilled by it, and her Two, uh, local, or two local performances, they've been different. They've tried to close from off the pace. And they've had her close to the pace, just a handful of lengths off. So I don't know what the strategy in this race is either because you start looking <laughs> at the run line and for all these horses. I, I don't know the pace scenario. Well, the number five who you have further down, I have a third undercover outlaw is going back to the main track after a solid return on the turf. She stalked the pace in that race, finished, uh, I think, in a dead heat for fourth against 12-5 maidens going five. Zero for 21 made, and you got to deal with that. Sammy Camacho trying to spring maybe a little bit of an upset here at 8 to 1. This is a wide open affair. Yeah, this is one that last time out you mentioned was a little closer to the pace, and maybe this horse is going to try to be closer to the pace today on the dirt. Uh, my only other reservation besides 0 for 21 is 0 for 6 here on the main track. A little hard to endorse, but. Uh, you know, this will either be a heavy favorite or probably a long shot that neither of us have. <laughs> yeah, J.D.'s Vista also gets into race mm -hmm. the number 14. You might want to 
take a look. I think that one is like five, three to one. Uh, you yeah. know, didn't get got in today, so make sure you take a look. I added it uh, down into the fourth spot. I went back and looked. Ran a good third last time out. Maybe you will use a horse like that on your ticket. Race six today is where our late pick five starts. And, and uh, this one uh, is a mile and a sixteenth on the turf. These are claims three-year-olds, four and up, non-winners of three in life. So you got those two conditions there, 12 five down to $10,000. And we both have the number six, uh, the number eight, excuse me, Express Pharaoh. It's going to try and make in two in a row. It was pretty good last time out as the odds on choice. Was, was pretty good. Very strong. One by four and a quarter in there. Uh, kind of has been loving the mile and a 16th distance. Two for three in the money. Both of the last couple starts have been really solid. So uh, I think this horse has really turned the quarter since joining the barn of Victor Barboza Jr. Sammy has been aboard for the last two, stays aboard. So to me, you know, there's two horses that in terms of figures kind of stood out. Express Fair was one of them. The other is the horse that uh, maybe it's my name play of the day. Sassy, <laughs> but smart. The number three. I mean, they have the best figures in the uh, race. I'll agree with that. Well, <laughs> let's go back and show you this horse's race. Now, this horse was 20 to the one that they was against tougher competition and you're just going to see how this one's going into the far turn and sort of you know has to steady and just you know one of those things where you just get knocked off stride and you know you have to regather the horse has to regather itself and come running i thought ran a decent third at 22 to 1 or 21 to 1 in that race so i just thought it was a good performance and you know look who's in front you know light fury val me you know you know these are tough horses and i think the drop is going to be key for this horse you're going to see it just i thought finish third after that little bit of trouble that this horse had a chance and you know as we mentioned 21 to one last time second choice on the, on the board because of the spot yeah and those were very tough uh, turf horses when you look at the starter allowance competition here Valmi now I mean this is a horse that's had 90 plus buyer speed figures and has been really competitive here and has a ton of early foot a uh, light fury out of the Ron Spatz barn just really tough competition and it was a little different because you go two starts back that first start off the long layoff this horse went to the front tried to hold on and tired to finish fifth. I just think for the, the class relief that this one's getting today, major player. And what about the number four Farm Strong? I didn't use this one. I've picked this horse a couple of times already. I'm a big fan of Diane Marici. <laughs> I can always catch her on a price. Or she's another horse that I really like that hasn't been a price in a long time, but a really competitive horse here on the turf in the dirt. Uh, in the, in the Looking at Farm Strong, I guess two starts back, uh, faced winners for the first time out, was supposed to be on the turf, it was moved to the main track, was still able to get the job done, so one, two in a row, bumped him up considerably last time out, he was 18 to one in there, uh, just wasn't kind of a, a good spot for him in my opinion, so I like him dropping back in for 12-5 today. He's been in the money half the time on the turf course. And, you know, we talked about horses that I think are going to be really short in price. I'm hoping that's going to keep him closer to his morning line. And then number two, Marissa's mission real quickly. Drops to the 12-5 level again. One at this level. Broke slowly. I think this horse is a major player with a timely break this afternoon. So a horse that uh, we both have some interest in. Race number seven this afternoon. Seven furlong sprint. Maiden claim is three and up. $35,000. Full field of 10 to kick off the late pick four. And uh, jockey change on the number 10. The rider will now be Christian Torres. Let's see your ticket. Yeah, looking at the late pick four. This is an interesting. I don't <laughs> think I ever single in the nightcap, but I had to. That's going to be my best bet of the day. I went four deep in here. I know you have some interest in the number 10, Ziggy. I also use the number one, Captain. The three, Creative Choice. And the seven, Menelik. Race eight, just three deep in here. I think you were kind of looking at Freedom Matters as one of your horses in here. I also use New Year and the number eight, Robin Take Charge. Race nine, three deep in here. Two of them, I think we have the same. Mm. That being Love Lauren Lady trying uh, kind of third start off the layoff, I should say. Four, Tis Possible Deer, as well as the number eight, Femini. And then I'm singling in the last. Uh, I could get beat here. I just think of looking at recent performances. I'm going to use the number three golden de decision. First off the claim for Gustavo Delgado, who's also adding blinkers. And I thought that was an interesting angle. 25% with first blinker. So uh, hopefully that gets me. Hopefully I can stay alive and then get it home in the last. We call that the reverse pyramid. <laughs> yeah, yep. That bet goes like this. And certainly, uh, well, you didn't see me on there. I was making a reverse. There it is. Thing. Uh, uh, seven furlongs, as you mentioned. Uh, you know, Christian Torres on the horse that I'm going to talk about about first in here, and that's the 10 Ziggy. He was cutting back to the seven furlongs in the main track. I get to take the blinkers off this afternoon after returning. It was a pretty extended layoff to finish fourth against those state-bred 25 types, going seven and a half furlongs on the grass. Uh, Juan Alvarado, 24% with the turf-to-dirt angle. As I mentioned, Kristen Torres, 
just thought this was a nice spot for this horse. I think it is, too, just making that second start since December of 2020. And you look at those dirt races, they were back in May and December. So they've been a while, uh, made in special weight competition on debut as a, as a two-year-old, then dropped in, but still had some time off. So I like that this horse is finally getting a true second time out and is returning to the dirt. I think he is their choice on the morning mm -hmm. line. And the horse, the number one horse in here, Captain, is your top selection. He's making the third stop back from the layoff, finished third behind uh, the horse that's also in this race, Creative Choice, but it is Kathleen Emisiel Haramia returning on this three-year-old son of Kozan. Yeah, they team up at 18% here at Gulfstream Park. Uh, when you look at this Colt, he made one start as a two-year-old late last year. He faced horses such as Willie Boy and some nice runners in there. He's been in for the $35,000 tag his last two. He raced on August 1st and August 27th. Uh, he hit the board in both of them. The main thing, though, he's kind of been no match in the end. It says no match, no threat. He's tired in those. I'm just hoping the third start off the layoff. He has an inside draw. And looking at the pace scenario, it'd be interesting to see what the strategy is. There are a couple horses that show at least that they want to be forwardly placed. I don't want to say that they're early speed, but he showed some speed two starts back, so maybe they'll try to send him from the inside. And number three, Creative Choice is going to give uh, it another try at this level and distance. Stalk the pace, finish a distant second. For Joe Orsina, Chantal atop the gilded son of Creative Cores. Uh, I think we got the same sort of super up there. Race number eight, this is a good betting race in here, and this one's a mile on the turf. Claim is three and up, 20 down to $16,000. I went with Louder and Bombs. We'll start at the edge, drop it to the 20th level after failing to show his usual stalking style when he rallied from far back to finish six against uh, Freedom Matters, who we'll be talking about in a moment, uh, David Forks, MCL Jaramillo. I, I think this horse is going to be closer to the pace of that inside draw today. You know, I I'm not sure what to do with Louder Than Bombs. I thought the race two back it was a really strong race for him, so I endorsed him last time out. And he just seemed flat in the stretch to me. I wanted to see more from him, and I didn't. He's got the inside draw today. To me, he doesn't have a ton of early foot, but it's fine. He's going a mile. I didn't know what to do, so I used him for fourth in here. I was just slightly disappointed last time out. Well, Freedom Matters, who defeated four next out winners and slow starting, louder than bombs two starts back, is hoping to bounce back. Uh, in your know, first race after the claim by Jose Garofalo would come up, but didn't run very well against those 16 starter allowance runners going seven and a half furlongs. And Freedom Matters has been claimed a bunch and usually runs well first off the claim. He didn't last him out against starter allowance competition. Again, though, we showed that race er uh, earlier. Val me now, light fury, sassy, <laughs> but smart, who's in the earlier race. So I I'm not going to discard the effort. I mean, it was just disappointing but he faced some tough horses here prior to that he was trying to keep that you know win streak alive very consistent horse here so for me it was enough to you know give him maybe a pass here and see if he can improve at the twenty thousand dollar level the number two New Year's turned it back to the mile rally forward to finish third against the starter optional claimers going a mile in the 16th Talk about this, it's 9 for 14 in the money on the Gulfstream turf. Yeah, he's run really well, and I know two starts back, he's exiting that race that we've referenced now at Louder Than Bombs, that Freedom Matters won. But uh, last time out, I really liked the way he performed. He was able to kind of close in there and make up some ground. He kind of turned the corner. Sammy Camacho's uh, climbing back aboard, piloted him to a nice fourth, a couple starts back. So he's one that I think deserves a look in here, and he'll need some pace to run at, but hopefully he'll get that. Let's go to race number nine, a mile allowance optional claimers. State bred Phillies and Mares, three-year-olds and up the tag is $12,500. If you're in, uh, jockey change on the number eight Bimini, make the rider MCL Jaramillo. And uh, let's start it off with the Tis Possible Deer. We're just going to show you this one changing barns, going to the Carlos David barn, so you're going to like that. But look at the start of this race. It's just, that's it. Stays in the gate, hangs out for a little while. Now the gate opened, so he was a starter. And, and I just think I wanted to show that. That changed the whole race shape, you know, with the favorite. It was the favorite that day, big favorite. Goes to Carlos's barn today, 37% with new claims. Miguel Vasquez, a usually quick starting daughter of perspective. Yeah, the only concern I have about her, she's been acclaimed a bunch this year, just one for six on the year, which is uh, very different than last year. Last <laughs> year, she won six races from 14, so she uh, was a nice money winner last year. But this year, it hasn't been the same. You mentioned she joins a barn that wins 37% off the claim. If I want to play devil's advocate, I still like her. She had problems mm -hmm. last time out. 
Uh, my one thing I will say is she's gone from barns that are all very strong off the claim. Peter Walder, Marcial Navarro, Victor Barbosa Jr. I mean, these are the only one that's missing is like Jorge Delgado <laughs> and Safi, right? Well, maybe point. they'll get him today. Maybe. Yeah, so I'm uh, already talking you up to play Tis Possible Deer, probably a winner today. But uh, for me, I, I just have some reservations about her form this year as a six year old. Well, you did go with the three love lorn lady who's stretching out to the mile, stalked the pace, finished second behind. A uh, really impressive winner that day in Co Cosmore, I think it is. Yeah, the Kathleen O'Connell, the other no, Kathleen no, no. O'Connell in the race. She finished first in third in there. It was a nice second, though. It just wasn't a match for the winner. Prior to that, I know the effort was disappointing, but it was the first off the layoff. I have a feeling Nacho Mama is a pretty decent no. horse. We both know that. So uh, I'm excited to see her stretch up. It's going to be her biggest test to the date. Last time out that she did race at six and a half, though, and handled it well. And Safi, uh, sprint to root. About 20%. Yeah, he does a good job. Of course, he his horse ran exceptionally well yesterday. He had really a couple of nice yeah. runners, and then that not that we're letting you know anything special. He <laughs> is the leading trainee here by many, 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 and I will forget it next week for sure, as I usually do. Extravagant Rosie is my long shot today, 15 to one. Now there's a lot of guesswork, stretching out to the mile, dropping to the 12-5 level, which I like. Rally to finish third. It was against those 25 optional claimers, going seven and a half furlongs on the turf. Dennis Ward spots the long shot. I think it's a good spot for this horse. That is if she can handle the turf. That's why we're getting the 15 to 1. Yeah, coming out of all those turf races, moving in the dirt, though, there is a good stat. I'll give you one. So right. you don't think you have this one. 22% Dennis Ward when moving horses the past year. So $1.77 cent ROI. Uh, the performances have been good, though. As you mentioned, it's just going to be the, the class test, I guess, on the dirt. But when you look at some of the winners over the last few Kahiko's been a pretty yeah. nice horse, turf horse here for Kent Sweezy. Drapes, I think that's the Glen Hill Farm with mm -hmm. Tom Proctor. These are some nice names here, and she's been holding her own. Yeah, she's been holding her own. So let's see if she can handle the dirt. And that's why you get the 15-1. to 1. Last race, mile on the turf. Claim is three and up. Non-winners of a race since March 19. A dated claimer. Take it away with your single. Uh, again, it's <laughs> going to be Gustavo Delgado. Edgar Zayas was get, set to ride, but I believe now it's Christian Torres. So I've already kind of uh, <laughs> talked up that pair for the day. They do quite well, though, at Gulfstream. I think it's 22%. And I thought this horse, the last two, they've been really strong races, most recently at the level and distance on the turf. Finished second in there behind Ambassador Jim. You can tell it was a wide open event when this horse was the favorite at 4 to 1 in that field of 12. So good performance. The barn does well off the claim. I think this horse is also going to step up, making that second start off the layoff. Another horse that's getting blinkers is a nine ground mile back and this one has stalked the pace, finished fourth behind aforementioned gold decision and uh, speedy super Jaguar is also in this race today. Last time out, Amanda De La Cerda, MCL Jaramillo. Uh, just, uh, you know, I like golden decision like you. I thought maybe grand mile back can grab a share. My dad's a big fan of this horse. So <laughs> there's your, there's your, I guess, plug for this horse. Mm -hmm. um, it's only tried the mile twice in the career, one of which was last time out. I thought it was an okay performance. Ran better, I think, on the stretch out. Now going to, you know, have those two back-to-back -back mile races can maybe show some improvement. Well, Super Jaguar sort of tipped it out. It looks like this one might be the speed. It looks to be the speed. I mean, he tried to take him on the front end last time out over the firm going at the level, and he finished third in there uh, with the same rider today. So for me, I, I think he can hang around for the share. I don't know. He, he really impressed me about four starts back, but I think some of the spots that he was in has been tough. He had to race on the main track. So he at least showed some of his old abilities last time out. Well, that takes care of the a 10 race card, but we got our lightning round and a lot of races we want to revisit from yesterday. And we'll start it off in the lightning round with the uh, Eldon's Prince, trained by Safi Joseph Jr., winning the Armed Forces. We mentioned at the top of the show these races were taken off the turf, but this turned out to be a great race. This is a great race. I mean, <laughs> I, you know, Nona Franklin's the horse I loved if it was on the <laughs> turf, and I downgraded him for Golden Wine, but there was a little bit of a stretch battle here. Yeah. And Eldon's Prince, they both kind of had to tip wide, and Eldon's Prince was able to mow this one down just by a head in the end. So exciting to see where these two go. Obviously, they handled the dirt, but they also both like the turf. You know, before we show a couple other races, just a, a sad note here with uh, the passing of uh, Gilbert G. Campbell, co-owner with his wife, Marilyn, of Stonehenge Farm near Williston, Florida. Big supporter of Florida racing. A and just want to go back and show you his race where two of his horses finished one, two, and that was in the Dr. Fager. And you have Cajun's Magic and Dean Delivers, of course, trained by Mike Yates, both of them. Uh, Dean Delivers uh, uh, had 
I think shin problem after that. We haven't seen him since, but Cajun's magic's been running good. So, uh, you know, just a, a somber good performance. You know, it's great for them. And Stonehead's just a big supporter of racing in South Florida. Yeah, it was exciting to see them finish 1-2 in that first division of the Florida Sire Stakes. And a uh, big supporter, you know, you mentioned horses with Michael Yates, uh, also horses with Ralph Nix. And he's had a lot of a lot of horses that have raced here and a lot of them, uh, you know, being Florida breds and being part of the Florida uh, Sire Stakes program. So sad to lose one of the big faces around here. And uh, Diamond Wow, I'm going to make you handle this replay because this is your buddy. I love Diamond <laughs> Wow. I've been a really big fan of the, the two-year-olds out of the Patrick B. and Cone Barn. And Diamond Wow, I wasn't sure what was going to happen here on the stretch out on the main track, but she really impressed here stretching out from, I believe, five ace on the turf to seven ace over the main track. And Harper B. Good was a horse with dirt win under her belt, was trying to mow her down, and Diamond Wow just kicked clear. So it was a nice day for Patrick B. and Cone. We watched the other replay. He was second with No Nay Never, uh, and that's kind of a flip there. Safi wins the first <laughs> with Eldon Sprints, 1-2, and then they flip there. So really nice little rivalry for those two. Yeah, and our, our people in the media department talk to uh, Patrick, and they're looking to go to uh, uh, Keeneland, maybe in the Jessamino, one of those winning your in races. Yeah, I think the second weekend of racing there, the 8th and the ninth, they'll mm. decide which one they want to go to. So I'll definitely be tuning in. I love Keeneland, but I'm a really big fan of Diamond Wow. And this is a niece to one of our favorite horses, Diamond Oops. Diamond Oops. He ran really well at Kentucky Downs in a great three. Yeah, it was second in that race mm -hmm. at a big price. And uh, uh, then one other race we want to show you, this was the city of West Park, and uh, we were talking about this. this is a big boy, and he ran really well in this race. He just drew off in the stretcher. You can see him right there. Talking about Papa, too, wins the city of West Park. Lots of frequent flyer miles on this horse, but he doesn't miss many dances, and he was really good yesterday. He was. He kind of went out and had to lose, <laughs> lose some ground, but still was much the best beat Flamingo Hawk, and he took a lot of play in there. He went off at even money. He's just a horse you can't count out, and he always gives his best, so uh, excited to see where he goes next. He's been pretty good here at Gulfstream. Well, that's the lightning round. Uh, that's the 10 races. And now it's Pete Aiello's chance to get you caught up on everything you need to know to have a winning day here at Gulfstream Park.